Uh, to recap, I'm Andrew with Flair. Thanks for joining us on your Sunday. Today I want to talk to you about the valve plungers, best practices. Um, we have a pressurized system, and with a pressurized system, you should always be managing your pressure, or at least thinking about it, making sure that uh, you don't let it get the best of you. Um, so to start with, again, this is a valve plunger that we're talking about, not the original design. So if you have the valve plunger, you're going to be getting it. If you have a new production from October on, it comes with the valve plunger. And so what we have here now is uh, what we're calling the valve sneeze, just kind of a cute way to explain. When you still have a pressurized system and you release the whatever's holding that pressure in, you're going to get a little bit of a spurt or a gasp um, or a sneeze. And again, if you have lever machines, if you're familiar with the Lapavones or any other manual machines, they don't come with a three-way solenoid valve. And a three-way solenoid valve means on a high-end uh, commercial pump machine, you'll have these that when you cut the pressure to the pump, when you cut the pump, the, there's still pressure in there. It needs to go somewhere. Otherwise, if you were to just remove your portafilter, you'll have like a spray of coffee. They have what is a three-way solenoid valve so that when they cut the pump, that excess pressure gets shot out into your drip tray. And you know, you've seen that or have heard that if you, you hear like a spray and some steam coming out of your drip tray on these uh, high-end commercial machines, it's because they have that, uh, that valve to release pressure. But we don't, um, except that it is our valve plunger now. So it just means that when you go to release pressure, just be mindful of how you're doing that. And I'll demonstrate right now. In fact, I'll make some coffee. It's probably the easiest way uh, to show you uh, what I would consider the best practices to do it without having any problems or issues. And then I'll show you what happens when you're not um, controlling, managing your pressure well. So looks like, yo, I've got Jordan here, Danny, Mickey, okay. Um, I'm going to start boiling water. I'm gonna grind out some coffee. Uh, if you have your Flare 58 or 58X, I am using 18 grams with a straight wall basket. If that matters to you, and I'm going to give it a little RDT, a little spritz of water to make sure that uh, when it comes out of here, I don't get any static happening. And if you guys have questions, put them in the chat. I'll do my best to answer them by myself. I don't think I have anyone uh, from Flare helping out today. It's their Sunday, so we don't want everybody to be stuck uh, with me doing this. So, since some of you might be curious about my workflow, I'm gonna give you a top-down view real quick here. So you can uh, check that out. This is a, a WDT, Vice Distribution Technique uh, tool here. And I'm just doing circular patterns and lifting up as I go until I get to the top and then a little bit left, right, north, south, east, west kind of thing. And just looking to see that I have a level bed before I tamp. And if I don't, I'll just make some corrections and take that off. Uh, and then people ask about if you have like more coffee sitting up above, how do you get a tamp? Because if I were to just tamp right now, I'm gonna blow out some coffee to the side. So that's where you wanna give it a couple little taps on the counter, which I think you can kind of still see. You give it a couple taps and you can see it fell down below the rim. So now when I go to tamp, I won't have coffee blowing out the sides. And uh, I'm a finger tamper, so I'm just pushing down the level, filling the rim, trying to get that as uh, level as I can. And drop our puck screen because with the valve you have to have a puck screen now, you have to have something to protect. So we're gonna lock this in, turn this on. So with the valve plunger, what we're going to do, let me get you back to here. Actually, what I'm gonna do is try a picture in picture. <laughs> so bear with me for a minute while I try to set this up. I've been having some issues with it, but I think I can figure this out now. No, nope, I didn't do it right. <laughs> All right, so I gotta have this. Sorry, people. That's what happens when you try to be fancy. Things like this happen. They don't always work out. All right, so what I need to do is go here. I need to go here. I need to turn on my picture in picture. Do this. Go here. Do this and go there. All right. Got it. <laughs> so I'm going to walk you through what I do here with the valve plunger. And keep in mind you have, so let me go through what I would consider the four best practices. I try to make them into cute little mnemonic type of uh, phrases here. 
for you to kind of keep track of what they are and maybe give you some idea of what I'm talking about. So the first one is let it go to your head. And by that, I mean the headspace down here between the coffee puck and the plunger. There's always gonna be some headspace. It's currently blocked by the plunger. So if I just fill this up to the top, I'm actually going to have air trapped inside the system. Air is very compressible. We want as little to no air as possible in the brew chamber when we're brewing, because what happens is before you can actually brew, before you can push that water into your coffee bed, you have to compress that air. So you're gonna see that your lever is traveling quite a ways before your pressure actually builds to anything. And that means you've got some air in there. So that's your first tell. If I see that I'm lowering the lever and the needle isn't rising, that means I'm compressing air before I'm building pressure. And that tells me that I'm gonna to have to be concerned uh, or paying attention to my pressure at the end of the shot because I know that what's gonna happen is when I relieve the force on that lever, I'm going to go from that compressed air to decompressed. It's going to expand kind of like a, a spring and that will cause things to behave in ways that aren't you know, ideal. So if you've ever, if you came through the uh, Flare 58, if you came through one of the other flares behind me, the Pro, the Classic, Signature, or the, the Neo, you know that you have a non-locking non brew head. And if you had air in the system and you went from nine bars to letting go of that lever, something has to give for that pressure to bleed. And what usually happens is you have an expansion going on. It could be that your cylinder pops up and off your portafilter on a non-locking system because that's the easiest way for the pressure to come down is to expand the volume. Um, it could also be that the plunger, the stem, the piston is rising to bleed, to expand. And so with this system, it's a locking portafilter and cylinder. So the only thing where you, the only places you can bleed pressure is down here and up here. And you, that coffee puck will always hold some pressure still in the chamber. So it's gonna bleed from up here. And that's that gasp or that sneeze. When you have air in there especially, and you let go, it's just going to purge that air. Uh, the plunger will be rising up, but the stem will also have some room to kind of pop up and off. And when that stem pops up and off, you'll have that release and you'll hear it kind of an audible puck or, or, or uh, you might see some spurt of water. And that's the thing we don't want, obviously, especially if you do have uh, quite a bit of hot water left in there is you don't want to see any splashes. So with this system, I wanna make sure that I fill that headspace. So let it go to your head, let that water get to the head. The way to do that is as I start to pour, I'm going to lift the lever just a little bit. When I lift the lever, you can probably see that the stem is rising just a little bit. When that stem rises, you're opening up the valve, you're letting water get in to the uh, plunge or into the headspace below. So that's our first step. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add water right now. And as I add water, I'm gonna lift on the lever. And once I've lifted up enough, I should get some water in. The other thing I like to do is I like to just lift this lever as I'm pouring. And if you have a brand new plunger, your O-rings probably uh, needs to be lubricated and used. You might see some bubbles coming from right here. And what I wanna do is make sure that I've actually filled in all the way. And I can see that there's probably some more room to fill in, so I'm adding some water right through that crack right there. If I do see bubbles, it probably means one of two things. I might be boiling water, which I kinda am, uh, because at my elevation here, uh, I am boiling water at 92 degrees. When I lift this, you see water in the well. So this is something you should experiment a little bit with at first, just to make sure that you're actually filling up that chamber all the way with water. If I were to lift it and assume that it's full but not actually see the water, then I'm gonna have air in the system and that's going to lead to you know, some of that gasping that we talked about before. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the shot. Looks like my video's still working, I should be good. I'm gonna start the shot. I'm looking at the mirror, I don't know if you can see it. Um, I might be blocking it. I'm getting a little pre-infusion right now making sure my whole basket fills in. After a few drips, I'm gonna go ahead and lead into pressure. And I'm gonna pull this probably about seven bars, seven or eight at the most. And I'm just gonna hold that. And as I get closer to about 25, 26, I'll probably start declining a little bit. My target today is kind of one to two, so I've gotta be pulling to about 36 grams from an 18 dose. Coming up on 23 seconds, 36 grams, I'm letting it up. So this is where I would recommend you come and you grab another cup and you slide it. This is the second point that you can do here. And that is finish what you started. Instead of immediately lifting up to purge again, just swap out a cup. This is common practice with almost all levers out there. There's always going to be a volume of water left in the chamber that you want to express and get out. And you'll see a lot of people will just take that cup, swap it out, and then just keep pulling. 
So I advise that because this way, if I were to lift this right now, I'm opening the valve and I'm gonna entrain air. And when I entrain air, now I know I've got air in the system and I'm gonna to have to be a little bit more mindful. But because I've just swapped cups, I haven't lifted, opened the valve, I can just keep pushing through all the way to the end and just probably don't even have to hold this down. Now at this point, what I've done is I've pushed the water out of the chamber, but depending on how much coffee I have in the portafilter, I'm going to have some remainder water sitting on top. So let me show you that. So I think you can see right in here, there's a little bit of water. Now at this point, I can just tilt this out over the sink and I'll be done with it and knock the puck out. And that's one thing you can do. Again, I've purged this entirely. I don't have any water left. Just this, which I can flip over. If you're looking for a really dry puck, you like that nice clean knock, uh, this should fall right out to be honest. Uh, but for those purposes, I just want to show you, I'm going to put it back in, lock it in. So now I have some water there. I have um, the air out, but in order to purge it, I'm going to lift this up a little bit and I'm going to finish purging that out. And I don't want to lift this all the way back up, only just enough to get rid of that water. I could do that, you know, further up, but what I'm going to want to watch is what's going to happen now that I've just pulled a bunch of air into the system and compressed it. I can push this through for a nice dry puck but again, I'm gonna hold this down a little bit and you might be able to hear that kind of like shh. That just means I pushed most of the air out, all the water is out, and I'm just gonna release this gently. And you might've just heard a little pop, little sound. That's me opening the valve, letting a little bit of that remaining air out. And so this is all good to go. Now, where you could have some surprises or you know, being startled by, it. it's just like somebody sneezes next to you and you didn't know it was coming. It can be a little bit startling that first time. You know, it's just like, what was that? So I could pull this up and I could push like this and you hear it's a little bit louder when I just quickly release off the lever because it's gonna be more forceful the more air I've compressed, the more air that needs to be released. So there's other thoughts. Like you saw, I just did, I made espresso, no problem. And that's how the product functions. What we found out though, when people first started getting their valves, is they weren't mindful of the pressure, and so this is why we wanted to do the live stream today, just to show you the better ways to make espresso, or at least just to be mindful that you do have a pressurized system and it needs to be managed. So the next thing is, again, finish what you started, which means just keep letting the lever go from start to finish, all the way through. Don't do a purge until you've pushed all that water out, because at that point, you do have the option of just draining the remaining water, or just doing a very small purge to get the remaining water out. Uh, the third one is just walk away. So I've got a nice espresso, Go off and go drink it. Let this cool down. Um, unless you're pulling a shot from somebody else, no reason to manage hot things, um, even the portafilter, the coffee bed. So you go ahead and turn off your flare and go enjoy your espresso before it gets cold. So walk away, just let this drip. In fact, if I were to have a lot of water in there and just walk away, right, right now I have air, but I don't have water, so the water would help. But if I just walked away and left the lever like this, with a cup underneath, it's gonna to continue to fall until if I come back after I've enjoyed my espresso, the water's gonna be out, it's gonna be fully drained. You can come back to it and, and work it out then at that point. Um, the next one is keep your cool handle the pressure, which is what I showed you. So see how you just drop and let it go? If there was water, it would slowly come down and I could just let it do its thing. But if you're in a hurry, that's where you're gonna find that you're going to have these little gasps, these little sprays. So don't be in a hurry, slow it down. So again, if you are pulling back-to-back -back shots, if you're using this in a cafe or an event and you're trying to uh, keep pulling shots when you obviously can't do that other thing about giving it time, walking away, whatever, just know that you have this pressure that needs to be managed. Um, and in order to do that, you have to, as I say, keep your cool, handle your pressure, just make sure that you're always holding this down until you're certain that you've expressed out everything. If you let go of this too soon and there's still air, the first place it's going to escape is right there in the step. Let me show you uh, why that is. Actually, let me not waste this beautiful espresso. Mm, that is good. Um, here is the valve and here is the original. You can see that there's a, a deep pocket here, whereas here it's more of a straight through. When we were using this and you let go of the lever, you, were, you had a little bit more flexibility, I guess, because the stem isn't going anywhere because we're not, we don't, we're not looking to make this a valve. So if I just quickly let off the lever, the stem is, is uh, not gonna go. I can think you can see the, the amount of movement here is minimal to nothing. It's still got a seal 
going on here, so it blocks it. But since we wanted to enjoy these other workflows, we've had to create this valve. And the valve now, when it lifts up, you can see it creates that opening. And that opening is the thing that we're being mindful of now. And it's only going to be that issue with the valve plunger, not the original, because when you let go of that lever, the amount of movement on that is enough to open up that space to let the valve work. Um, and so that's this lever, right? Until you push down, you have an opening. So that's where we close the valve, and when we lift up on the lever, that's where we open it. So that is how those work, and that is what we want to make sure you're mindful of. Um, again, it's with a normal workflow, you shouldn't have any problems at all, but if you do see or hear anything coming from inside the chamber, that is the valve sneeze, and that is because you still have some pressure there that should be relieved. Um, I'm gonna look through and see if there's anybody else with some questions, and then I want to quick, uh, let's see, if I had any other things to tell you today. I think that was mostly what I wanted to cover. Um, it's always hard to do these live streams and remember everything I wanted to share with you. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that. Uh, let's see, what do I have for questions? Matt Russell, what's up, Matt? If I prime the plunger after the shot and after I've plunged, let me get back to me here. Oh, uh, actually, I'll leave this there. I think you can see me, we're good enough. Uh, let's see, if I primed, if I, if I prime the plunger after the shot and after I've plunged all the way and removed the portafilter, filter, I'll release a bit of water. Am I doing something wrong? Prime the plunger after the shot and after I've plunged all the way and removed the portafilter, filter, I'll release a little bit of water. Um, I'm assuming, Matt, that you have the valve plunger. Is that what we're talking about, prime the pump? Uh, there's always going to be, you know, again, you can see that depending on how much coffee, this is an 18 gram basket, which just means you can use anything from uh, 16 to 22, maybe even less depending, but generally speaking, as you want to use more or less coffee, you start getting smaller baskets or bigger baskets. Uh, but there's going to be that headspace there and the plunger is only going to, the valve plunger is coming in to just a certain point in there. Um, so there's always going to be maybe a little bit of water there. Uh, if, if you're opening this out and the water is kind of splashing out, it means you have some residual pressure. If you're opening this up, there's a little bit of water and you move it and it splashes, then that just means you haven't completely uh, purged it. You'll have to ask me later, Matt. I'm sorry, I'm not sure exactly the question. Is that the low flow basket? No, that is the, so, <laughs> so the stock basket is now a low flow basket. If you bought early on, we were sending them out with these quote unquote uh, high flow baskets. And the high flow basket is a straight wall. I think you can see that. And the low flow basket is tapered uh, or chamfered as they say. And originally we sent them out with a straight wall but then we found out some people had some challenges with their grinders and so we decided that the chamfered is the best stock uh, basket to send. So the newer ones are the chamfered and the uh, the accessory or the uh, optional would be the straight wall. Uh, I thought you pushed all the way through. By prime, I mean up and down a little. I wouldn't, so don't, don't do this if you, oh, I think maybe you meant like just the beginning when I first added the water and I lift it up. Don't, you don't need to prime it a pump the way that you might be familiar with other ones. You just need to prime it by lifting it up and allowing some water to get into the headspace first and then going up with it. Or you could fill this up, lift it up, and then top it off at the end. It's up to you. I, I personally like to just, I feel like I get it filled more often um, when I fill as I lift, because I feel like there's some suctioning, some, some pull of the water getting through that valve. Otherwise, I feel like there's probably a better chance there's gonna be more air uh, and a little bit more topping off at the end. It, it, you know, whichever works for you. But again, until you, uh, have used your plunger or lubricated it, well, you're gonna lift up and you're gonna pull the whole thing up because there's enough friction on those plunge, on those new uh, O-rings to actually uh, cause this to lift up. So make sure that you've lubed it if you wanna try to do my little uh, thing. Or, um, yeah, that's pretty much the only way to do it. Uh, any thoughts on preheating the puck screen? Yeah, so the puck screen, uh, I just keep it here when I start. And this is why, uh, so like I'm, I'm boiling water here because that's kind of my situation anyways. 92 degrees is boiling for me. So I'm always getting steam. So just make sure that you get some steam. You can do that. 
Um, you could also just pour some water right down on top of your screen. So that's that's way to, and then just shake it out and go. So it's a good idea to preheat that and maybe the basket, but the porta filter itself, uh, I'm still of the opinion that preheating the porta filter is not really necessary because of the air gap here, because this is contacting the brew head with a uh, silicone or a, uh, a gasket. So that's a thermal insulator. So really, I don't think there's a lot of temperature. Um, it takes quite a while for this to heat up, especially when you don't have this big brass block sitting on it, uh, convecting heat into it. So I don't think with all that air and everything else that the porta filter itself needs to be hot, but these two items here, good idea to keep those hot. Uh, maybe you have to go up and down a bit after, yeah, don't go up and down. So again, remember when you're doing this, and let me, uh, let me see if I can demonstrate a little bit more for you just while I have you, because that is the purpose of this live stream. So right now I have just air in here, and I'm going to add a little bit of water. And by the way, this is another thing you can do. Um, if I was to want to pull, I think I mentioned it in another live stream, if I want to pull a uh, more of a traditional espresso for Italian style, which is seven to 10 grams of dry coffee and maybe 25 to 28 or less uh, yield, I don't need to fill this whole chamber up. I only need to get just the amount of water that I need uh, based on what experimentation you do with your coffee and everything else uh, that you need. So once you know what that level is, how much fill based, you know, eyeballing it, I can just put that much water in. And I only have to lift that lever just up until I see that water go through and stop there. This also helps us to keep air out of the system. So if you're going to use less water, don't underfill it and start with the plunger up here. Only lift the plunger to the point where the water drains in by the valve and then go ahead and pull the shot. I need to wet the whistle, sorry. And I need a cup. Um, so at this point, when I pull this down and I let go, because it's only water, it's fine. I can let off pretty quickly. A little bit of air gets entrained in as I let that come up a little bit higher and the valve opens. But as I continue to pump this or if I'm trying to purge this, now I just brought air in because I brought the plunger above the water. And you can see that needle isn't doing much. I think you can see, yeah, that needle isn't doing much even though I've pulled that lever down quite a bit because now I have that air to compress. So now that I have the air in the system, I know it's there. I've made sure, or I've, I've seen the indication that it's there because that needle is showing me that it takes a while to build pressure. Then I'm gonna be careful at how quickly. So you can see that the other thing I do is I don't just let off the lever. I keep my hand on it while I'm going up and down. And this makes sure that I don't just do that. And you can see and can hear there's a little bit of psh when I quickly let off. So don't quickly let off the lever. And again, if you've brewed with any of these, you know this by now, but if you're new to the 58 system, you might not know about what happens when you have air in the system and you quickly release the handle. Don't quickly release the handle. Don't pump it um, fast and radically. Just always keep in mind, I want as little air in that system as I can. Keep that in mind as you're brewing. But again, you, so you have that here to deal with. And that's where, when I'm letting off the lever, I'm measuring uh, slowly, measuring how much to let off. I'm not just releasing, because as you let that air in there, you can hear it go psh, psh. So that's the valve sneeze. If you uh, didn't catch that from earlier on or from uh, the description, that's the thing we wanna prevent. Obviously, if that water was really hot and I had my head here for some reason, which is never a good idea, um, and I really let go, you can get some spraying, so let's not do that. Let's, let's be mindful of the pressure that we've got. Keep in mind, with the valve, it's going to release through the valve. That's what a valve does. So as soon as you let off that lever, you've released that valve to do whatever it needs to do. And if it's just water in there, it won't do much. It will just bounce up a little bit, but it won't gurgle or sputter because it's just water. And air or water coming out, just one of the two things, will always be more of a steady stream. But the two mixed together will be sort of like a sputtering uh, spraying effect. So. That is pretty much all I have for you now. Uh, let me see if I got anything else I can answer for you guys. And let me get back to me since I don't think I need to show the top down anymore. All right. Um, and my stream is holding. I think I've figured this out. Hey. Any thoughts on preheating the puck screen until bubbles come out understood? Maybe I have to go up and down a bit after the shot to achieve that. 
You're gonna have to hit me up, Matt, later. I still don't think I understand why you feel like there's a pumping, a need to do pumping. I'm not following you here. I limited preheating puck screen, just an extra step. Thanks, Jordan. I did two full pulls up to eject all of the water. Uh, you're helping Matt out, appreciate that. Uh, what else can I help you guys with? High flow basket seems to dislodge easier when knocking out the puck. I think so, uh, Chu. I find that, um, yeah, I, I don't know. When I use this same basket on, say, my Decent, it doesn't always dislodge as easily, but for whatever reason, it comes out really nice and clean. Um, I don't use the low flow basket much, so I can't tell you, but I, I think I do recall it being a little bit uh, stickier, and I think that might be because it's not straight walled, it's not one consolidated uh, pile of coffee. It, it has some, some shape and edges to it, and it kind of falls apart, but uh, yeah, it comes out pretty clean. Uh, what else? Hello, Andrew. Do you have any recommendations for secondary portafilters from other companies? Yes, I do. Good question. I've got a good answer. Uh, so, uh, Passato, those are amazing. They're beautiful. They're, they're very well built and they feel well. And I've seen um, Mickey's in the chat here. Mickey has one. Um, also, Chris from... Uh, Chris, I forgot his channel, but Chris has it, the guy that uh, is on YouTube. Uh, so quite a few people have the Passato, that works really good. The one thing I wanna uh, keep in mind here is, and there's gonna be some water here, let me manage that. Uh, the one thing I wanna keep in mind is, when you get a portafilter that's not slanted like this, so this is straight, you can see that, what happens is it can interfere at the end of the shot. So it all locks in just fine, but you can see as you come here, and I'll give you the top down real quick. As you come in here, it's hitting the lever. And so to open this up, I have to lift the lever just enough to pull it out. So if you have a straight portafilter, even though it, it would probably it, it will work, you just have to be mindful that it's when it's on its way out or you're trying to go in, you have to lift that lever just a little bit. So if you're using the valve, you're going to want to lift just a little bit, lock it in, and then drop it again. So keep that in mind, but the norm core works. Uh, basically what makes them work or not work is these little wings right here, these lugs. They can be maybe too thick. The angle could be off a little bit. Generally speaking, what I'm noticing is the, if they're too wide, uh, so La Marzocco, Vic, uh, Victoria Arduino, ECM, they're, the ones that ship with their product are the one they sell direct from their websites tend to be a little bit uh, wider, fatter here. And so those just don't fit into the lugs here. Um, and so what you need to do is any of these third parties, Normcore, Passato, anything you find on um, Amazon or Ali, AliExpress that, that looks like a third party OEM that's supposed to work for E61s should work. The other thing to keep in mind is where these are will affect where it locks in and I can't possibly know. Um, I only have the ones that are at 90 with the handle so I, I know that those work well, at least how we've expected or designed them. I don't know what you're going to get when you uh, pick up one of these other ones. I think Pullman as well, cool. Yeah, I think, I think that I've seen that as well. Attempts to Lungo would lead to explosions. Air, this all explaining why my attempts at a Lungo. Hey, Robert. Um, yeah, so by Lungo, I don't know what your yield is for that. Are you, are you pulling twice, possibly? Are you, are you doing a refill? Because you could effectively, um, Again, you can do it. You just and, and you can pull the lungos. You just have to be mindful of, of what's going to what's going to happen if you aren't managing your pressure. Um, but I'm assuming if you're if you're talking about something with a lot without a lot of pressure, like one to two bars, you could effectively pull one shot, add some more water, raise it, and go back down through. But you always make sure that you're pulling in and filling this up with water. Um, you can get yields of 90 on up if you fill this a second time, but it generally wouldn't work if you're using a higher pressure because you're going to compress the puck and then you're going to relieve pressure. When you relieve pressure, the puck might jump uh, or expand and might uh, uh, diminish the integrity of the puck. But generally speaking, a lungo, you should be able to pull all the way through, again, if you're managing pressure and, and just mindful of it. So Robert, you can always hit us up later and ask us uh, or show us with a video what it is you're doing that, that you're struggling with. Um, but I don't see why you shouldn't have uh, the option to make a lungo. I, I do those all the time. I can pull about 65 if I'm uh, pulling the shot all the way from top to bottom, generally speaking, with the coffee that I use. So you should be able to get a lungo. And again, a lungo, these are just uh, 
you know, more like we, we use ratios these days. So that's closer like to a one to three. And there should be no reason why you can't get a one to three um, with just one pull. So I'm not sure what, what's going on there. I attempted after a filter, oh, 2.0 worked well with no pluck blowout or anything else. I think the valve alleviates the puck cracking up to the middle. Yep, so that's the reason for the valve too, guys. If the filter 2.0 real quickly is, it's low pressure, again, one, two bars. It's a 90-ish um, mils or grams yield. So that's at uh, above the limit of what this cha uh, chamber can do the, on one pull. So you get one shot of maybe 60, 70 grams, and then you have to fill and raise again and then pull a little bit more to get a little bit more yield. But because it's only one to two bars and a very coarse grind, it's, it's not a big deal. And the difference with this new one versus the old one, again, um, when you go to lift this, you open the valve, it allows water to fill in and doesn't create a vacuum or a suction pulling up your puck. So that's the idea of the valve. That's why we want it. That's why it, it opens up more experimentation like the filter 2.0, um, because you can fill and lift and you shouldn't create any kind of suction if, they're, if you're going slow enough and you're not rushing it. You shouldn't disturb the puck or the bed of coffee underneath by lifting it up. The water should just entrain in. Uh, anybody else realizing that I'm entertaining the second fill? Replace, realizing that I'm entraining air at this, okay. Yeah, just make sure you get the air in there, Robert. Um, make sure that, I'm not the air, the water in there before you start to lift. Uh, so that when you do open the valve, what's coming in is the water and not air. So that's cool. Yeah, 60 to 65. So you should be able to do a lingo with just one pull. Um, so I'm not sure why you're in, in training air. It, I, I don't know, but again, we can help you out with that. All right, guys, uh, that's pretty much all I had for you today. Thanks for joining me. I uh, appreciate you. Brewing with Flair. If you guys have any other questions, you can hit us up at service uh, at flairespresso.com, Instagram, Facebook group. If you're not already in the Facebook group, Brew with Flair on Facebook is a great place. There's 15,000 of us over there. We're all sharing. In fact, most of the people I see in the, in the uh, chat talking are, are all uh, very active, helpful users in the Ruth Flair group. So it's a great community. It's a great place to have your questions answered uh, because your question is probably somebody else's. So you can do a quick search first. If you don't find the answer, post it. You get great answers there. Uh, so thanks, everybody. And again, I'm going to save this live stream. It's going to be, uh, I think the same link that you have now should work even. But if, it's, if not, uh, we'll, we'll send you out the new link. So if you came in late or you want to rewatch it, that will be available to you. I might also try, depending on the quality, maybe cut it into a better uh, video if it doesn't come out that right, uh, that good. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, everybody. Mickey, Danny, Robert, everybody uh, that joined me. And we'll hope to see you guys soon. Take care.